Okay, so it seems like there's this vast cultural divide between books and television. Like, there are book people and there are television people and never shall the two meet. And I've always liked both, so I think that's stupid. So because Mother Effing Books is all about bringing people together, uh, today we're going to do book recommendations based on your favorite TV show. This is definitely going to solve the problem. Someone call up the Nobel Prize Committee. Let's get on this. This is actually kind of challenging because obviously I have not read all the books and I have not seen all the television shows. And it turns out that my book tastes and my TV tastes don't always overlap. Like I watch a ton of sitcoms, but there aren't any on here because I couldn't come up with any books that matched up with them. And also a lot of the TV shows that I watch are already based on books. And I don't want to be all like, if you like Game of Thrones, you should read those books, I guess. Because A, that feels like cheating, and B, well, duh. But I did come up with five book TV pairings that I think are pretty good, so let's get started. Do, 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 do. I feel like the obvious choice for this is uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, or maybe something by Neil Gaiman. But since both Douglas Adams and Neil Gaiman have written scripts for Doctor Who at various points. That kind of feels like a cop-out. So instead we are going with Fluke by Christopher Moore. Fluke is all about a marine biologist who is studying humpback whale songs. And one day during the course of his research, he starts noticing some strange behavior amongst the whales, which kicks off a fantastical adventure. Much like Doctor Who, this is science fiction that has a lot of elements of fantasy in it. And I feel like it's got a similar sense of humor to the modern incarnation of the show. Although, content warning, Fluke contains a lot of foul language and violence and sex. So, if that's not your thing, maybe don't read it. For Mad Men, I have chosen The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which I realize on the surface seems like kind of a weird choice, but I think that Mad Men and The Great Gatsby are basically variations on the same theme. Don Draper and Jay Gatsby are both men who take slightly unethical paths on their way to the American dream, and I think both stories are ultimately about how those choices eventually destroy them. For Mad Men, I also have a bonus nonfiction pick, which is Swimming in the Steno Pool by Lynn Peril. This is all about the history of women in secretarial work, and it is A plus, I think, if you love Peggy Olsen. Do 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 I have two books for this one because they both cover uh, different aspects that you might enjoy of the show. Number one is Bright Young Things by Anna Godperson, which I do not have a physical copy of, so I will put the cover up right now. So the reason that Downton Abbey is genius is because they basically just went, hey, what if we made a soap opera, but where everybody was fancy? Which is certainly not a knock against it, because I think it's great. So Bright Young Things is set in 1920s America rather than Edwardian England, but it's got that same, like, soapy historical tone. The book begins in 1929 and follows three teenage girls and tells us in the very first chapter that by the end of the decade, one of them will be famous, one of them will be married, and one of them will be dead. This book is the first in a series, and I don't think the third one is even out yet, so it's gonna be a while before you find out the answer to that question, but there you go. One caveat to this recommendation, um, I loved, like, the plot and the characters and the relationships between them, but I hated the actual writing to the point where it kind of killed the book for me, so I kind of recommend, like, reading a couple of pages of this in the bookstore or like downloading the Kindle sample before you commit to it. Because like if the writing doesn't bother you, then it's awesome. And my other recommendation for if you are super invested in the saga of Mary and Matthew is A Room with a View by Ian e. Forster. I feel like I've been talking about this book a lot this week, but it's really good. This book was written in the same era that Downton Abbey takes place in, and it's all about two people who are clearly in love but just can't get it together. So if you watch Downton Abbey and are constantly screaming at the screen, oh my god, you two just smush your faces together, then this is probably 
a good book for you. Da, 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 da. I'm sure you're sitting there at your computers thinking to yourself, what book about vampires is she gonna trot out now? Nope, demons. Bet you feel stupid now. This is The Demon's Lexicon by Sarah Reese Brennan, and it is the first in a trilogy of YA books about teenagers killing demons. And I think if you really enjoy Buffy, then this is kind of perfect because it's got that same like found family aspect of like a bunch of people coming together to save the world. And it's also got a very like Joss Whedon-esque sense of humor. And it is the first part of a trilogy, but it also totally functions as a standalone novel if you're totally series doubt, which might be working against it because that's probably why I still have not read the second and third book, even though I loved this one. Yeah, Mythbusters doesn't really have a theme song, does it? So if you like Mythbusters, I'm going to assume that you like some science plus some funny. So I'm going to give you guys a blanket recommendation for the works of Mary Roach. I have only read Spook, which is all about various scientific inquiries into what happens after we die, but it was good enough that I am totally comfortable recommending all the rest of her stuff to you, even though I haven't read it yet. She wrote Stiff, which is all about the scientific and medical uses of cadavers, which seems to be most people's favorite. She also wrote Bonk, which is all about sex and Packing for Mars, which is all about space travel. And nonfiction often has a reputation for being dry, but not with these books. These are all really funny and really readable. So there you go. Be sure to let me know what you thought of these pairings down in the comments. And also be sure to let me know if you can come up with any other really good book and TV pairings. Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.